Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, I'm gonna quickly show you how to get up and running with the best PlayStation 2 emulator on Android, Eater SX2. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, at the time of filming here, the only way to get Eater SX2 is by signing up for the open beta. To do that, head on over to the official Eater SX2 Discord group, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Click on the open testing channel, and then the link is right here. Once you're signed up, you can download the app and you should be good to go. If you can't download the app, it might mean your phone isn't compatible. I'll leave a link to this site in the description below. It contains a list of every single device that's excluded from getting access to Eater SX2, probably due to performance issues. Eater SX2 is emulating the PlayStation 2 here, not the NES, not the SNES and it does require quite a bit of processing power. Now, just a friendly heads up here, you will need to provide your own games and BIOS file for Eater SX2 to work. If you don't know what a BIOS file is, I recommend checking out Google. There are a ton of great resources to show you exactly what you need. Once you've downloaded and installed Eater SX2, you should be greeted with a screen that looks like this. Feel free to press next. I highly recommend reading the FAQ and disclaimers. Once you've done so, feel free to click next. On this next page here, you can check change up a few things and select your performance preset. You can change the performance preset later on though, you're not locked in, it's not really a big deal. By default, it's set to optimal and safe defaults and that's where I recommend keeping it. So do they. They say we recommend the optimal safe profile as this will have the best game compatibility but may not perform well on devices slower than a Snapdragon 845. The fast unsafe profile may improve frame rates on low-end devices at the cost of breaking games and inconsistent performance. You can reset the profile at any time in the app settings. So I do recommend just keeping it on optimal and safe. If you have issues, then maybe try fast and unsafe. You might have to try fast and unsafe for certain games here. There's another option that says expand a cutout area. I don't have this checked. You can check it if you want. Uh, emulation screen orientation. So you can have this set to use device settings so it'll automatically rotate. If you want it fixed a certain way, you can set it up here. You can also change the aspect ratio here to stretch 4x3 or 16x9. Personally, I recommend going with 4x3. And the last setting on this page, you can change the theme for follow system, light, or dark. I personally recommend dark or just follow system if it's already in dark mode. That way it's the easiest on your eyes. If for some reason you like being blinded with really bright light, well, maybe just try light. This next page here is extremely important. It's where you import your BIOS file. If you don't do this, you can't play any PS2 game. So you will need to put your own BIOS file on your own phone here and then select the import BIOS button. For this video, I imported two different BIOS files and I'm gonna be using USA version 01.60. From here, you're almost done. Click the plus button and let Eater SX2 know where you keep your games. I do recommend putting all of your games in one specific folder. And then that way the emulator doesn't have to search your entire phone trying to find every single game you got because that might take a while. From here, press finish. Here's the main menu for Eater SX2. At this point, I've only got one game imported and that's because PS2 games are big. I'm working with limited space on my phone here. I don't have a lot of space. I have to be selective of what games I actually put on it. And this is one of my favorite games of all time. So it's definitely making the list. From here, click on the hamburger menu to bring up some more options. From here, we have a bunch of different options. The ones I recommend paying attention to to start are app settings and controller settings. So let's go ahead and click on app settings. On the general tab, enable frame limit, enable game fixes, and fast boot are selected by default, and I recommend keeping them there. On the system page, make sure enable fast mem is checked. It should be checked by default. And if you have a powerful phone, I recommend checking enable multi-threaded VU1. If you don't have a powerful phone and you check this, you might notice some performance loss. So just be mindful of that. For my phone, I've turned this on. In this menu, you can really have some fun here, but I don't recommend changing much at all until you know how these games play on your device. And if everything's playing well, then start tinkering with things. For the GPU render, we have three different options here, OpenGL, Software, and Vulkan. I recommend keeping it on OpenGL, seeing how that works. If you're running into issues with specific games, then try out Vulkan. It's reported that some games like Kingdom Hearts might actually work better with Vulkan. The upscale multiplier is amazing. It'll make your games look a heck of a lot better, but at the cost of CPU performance. 
You can change this mid game so it's not really a big deal at all, but I recommend starting out here at one times native PS2 graphics, seeing how things go and working your way up from there. If your game is running at full speed, there are no issues. Try cranking that up to two times, seeing how things go. If it's still at full speed, try three times or possibly even four times. When you notice some performance issues, that's when you start scaling things back. There are some other settings on this menu you can play around with. One of them is enable widescreen patches. If you want to try it out, you can. I noticed with Capcom vs SNK2, it kind of made things a little bit off center and unplayable. So I keep this one as off. There's also options in here like TV shader. So if you want to put on a CRT filter, you absolutely can. The shader options at the time of this video anyway are none, scanline filter, so kind of like a CRT, a diagonal filter, triangle filter, and wave filter. I usually just choose none. If you scroll down a little bit on the graphics settings here, I do recommend turning on show speed. And this will let you know how fast your game is running, if it's slowing down, if you're encountering any issues. Once you're fully comfortable with your setup, you can turn this off and not show it. From here, scroll down to the bottom of the graphics settings, and if you're having some performance issues, there are a couple of options here that might help things out. The first one is GPU palette conversion. Try turning that on, seeing if it helps. If it does, great. If it doesn't, try also turning on preload textures. If that helps, great. And if it doesn't, you can always try disabling hardware rebacks and maybe that'll help. The last thing here in graphics settings, if you're using software rendering here for a specific reason, you can go to software rendering threads and increase this if you understand what your phone has for capabilities. There's also game list and BIOS menus in here in the event that you have to import another BIOS file or if you just want to specify another folder for your games list, you can do it in the app settings. For the audio here, I recommend keeping everything as is. In the advanced settings here, I don't really recommend changing anything. These might be used on a game per game basis. If you're running into issues with a specific game, then this is the menu you might need to check out. For example here just quickly you could turn on something like upscaling hacks and check out a few of these options if you're running into a specific issue. Now getting out of the app settings and taking a look at the controller settings. Most of these you change in game so it's not really a big deal to change them here but these are the menus. By default here there's only one joystick showing on the touch controls. You can change that to show both joysticks if you want. Uh, the touch screen is set to port 1. You can set it to port 2 if you want for some reason. On top of that, we have three options here that are grayed out because you can only change those in game. On the bottom here, we have a couple of great options. Auto hide touchscreen controller if you have a controller plugged in. Uh, touch gliding here, this is a neat one. Allows you to press multiple controller face buttons by dragging your finger across the screen. By default, it's turned to off. If you use touch controls regularly, you can turn it on and try it out. And at the very bottom, there's vibrate on press. I hate this option, but if you like your phone shaking every time you hit a button, well then just turn that on. If you're using this with a Bluetooth controller, you don't really have a whole lot of options here. It's kind of limited, but at the same time, this is just a beta. So I was using an 8-Bit Doe Pro 2 and I actually had to select a couple of options here. Swap X and Y buttons as well as swap A and B buttons because for some reason mine were backwards in the emulator, but selecting these fixed the issue. Once your game is up and running, to get to the menu here, just hit the back button on your phone. We can load state, save state, toggle frame limiter, and toggle software renderer. This option here is actually pretty handy. If you're playing a game and you have a cutscene and you just get a blank screen, try pressing toggle software renderer just for the duration of the cutscene. That might load some things up for you. You might be able to see what's going on. Your game might slow down, but at the same time, after the cutscene's over, just press this button again to return things back to normal. At the bottom of this menu, we also have patch codes, change disk, and reset console. Now on the top right here, we have our controller options and we also have our settings options. If you click on the little D-pad here, it'll bring you to the touchscreen controls. And from here, you can customize pretty much everything you want about your touchscreen controls. You can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, you can move them around the screen, you can even add buttons if you want, for example a fast forward button. And if you click the gear icon you can change a bunch of different things, if you go to the graphics menu here you can upscale things on the fly, maybe if you're running into performance issues you turn things down, if you're running absolutely fine you turn things up and make them look better. To have some fun here I'm going to crank this up to 8 times native graphics and you can see the game slows down quite a bit. 
I'm running at, I don't know, 30% game speed here. This is pretty atrocious and 30% is being generous. For comparison here, we've got Capcom versus SNK2 running at two times native graphics and we're sitting at 100% game speed and it seems pretty consistent. It's running perfectly. At the end of the day here, Eater SX2 is the best PS2 emulator on Android and it's not even close and it's only in beta. If you're having some performance issues here, if things aren't going just right for you, be patient. This is very early on in development. Things will get better soon. Now, I also want to give a massive shout out to the developer Talrith on this because what they accomplished here is nothing short of incredible. This is amazing. I didn't think we'd be getting this good of emulation on Android for a very long time. So I'm extremely happy here. Hopefully you are. Also, shout out to Alex, one of the Discord moderators for the official HRSX2 Discord. Some of the information he provided actually made it into this video. Anyways, that is all I've got for this video. Let me know your thoughts on Eater SX2 in the comments below. What games are you playing and how's performance for you? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.